Hi there, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, and joined by Crash the Wonderbird. This is going to be a rant, so I'm going to implore you to immediately evacuate, extricate, exfiltrate any persons that have, shall we say, sensitivities to bad words, uh, be they due to the fact that you don't want to, you do not want to, as a parent, explain to them what I'm about to say, or you just don't want to hear it. So, the warning has been given, and you have exactly five, four, three, two, and rant begins. So, yet again, some fucking numpty on the blogosphere, the Twitterverse, you know, the inner stupids, has said something so heinous about mental health, and that is Jake Paul. Well, Jake Paul, you're 22 and you're a boxer. Okay, so let's just consider that you have zero real life experience, zero actual academic, clinical, or personal education in regards to mental health, and you're a boxer. Well, fun fact, you're a high likelihood uh, to be a long-term mental health patient or client later in your life, simply because your thinker's taking hits and you're getting, you know, standing concussions, um, much like the NFL players were getting brain damage. So you're going to be a client eventually. So he's deleted the tweet because it was like gasoline. And he said things that are, um, actually, I tried to respond to his tweet, or respond to the tweet thread, and I got myself a 12-hour ban off Twitter. So, I successfully managed to accumulate my first 12-hour ban. Jake Paul, if you watch this, or if anyone that happens to know Jake Paul, you're a fucking thief of air, a fucking waste of rations, and you're simply a fucking meat sack that's learned to fucking talk. You serve no real purpose in this world, except for you've managed to berate, belittle, and take a large segment of the population. So, depending on the statistics you want to read, it's anywhere between one in four or one in six in their lifetime will have significant mental health difficulties somehow. And it's not if you just thought happy thoughts, this would go away. You know, it's not if you chose to be happy, you know, I didn't choose a stroke. I didn't choose PTSD. I didn't choose, you know, the anxiety that I get at times or the depression that I have been dealing with. I didn't choose to have some of the, the things go on in my world that have gone in my world. People don't, you don't wake up one day and go to the supermarket of health issues and go, I'll take a little bit of that anxiety and I'll take half a cup of depression and I'll take a little bit of the social isolation. So working on the same highly educated medical opinion you have, everyone out there that has the diabetes or diabetes, just choose to, just choose to have a working body. Same, same is true for anyone that has, oh, like an amputee, just choose to grow a new limb. You know, if you have cancer, just think happy thoughts and choose not to have cancer. It doesn't work that way. Statements like yourself, or sorry, statements that you have made, you've caused people stigma that you, you, you're never going to meet. You're going to cause people to go back into the closet where they choose to hide their mental health issues from their friends, from their families, because if I told you I had diabetes, you're like, oh, you're getting the insulins. You know, if I told you I had a heart condition, you're like, oh, do you need surgery? You know, if I told you I had cancer, it's like, so what's the doctor say? Like, what are they going to do for you? You know, if I told you I had a broken arm, you're like, hey, you got a cast on or what do they do for you? If I, and I've had this personal experience um, from a couple different people in different contexts and situations. As soon as you disclose to someone that's not a mental health practitioner, um, that you have a mental health issue, depending on who the individual is and the relationship you had with them, they're either going to look at you like a walking case of herpesyphilis and immediately choose to 
disengage from you and treat you in a patronizing fashion and pat you on the head and go, there, there, it'll get better. Just think happy thoughts. I've already done a video on positive, the, the negative aspects of, you know, positivity and people that are always fucking happy, um, you know, and how that can be toxic, you know, toxic positivity. Um, I've done many videos on the stigma of, of mental health or mental health issues. Well, it's not something you wake up and make a choice to have. Some people, unfortunately, are born with mental health issues. It's a, it's a structural issue in the brain. It's a chemical issue. There is an actual biological reason due to a, a birth defect, essentially, that they have a mental health issue. Not that they're a defective human being, not that there's anything wrong with them, not that they can't be your friend or, or get a job or any of that. It's just due to the fact of an insult or an injury during birth or during um, the development in utero or genetics or whatever, not vaccines. I say this again, vaccines don't cause mental health issues. Um, they, they were born with a mental health issue. Um, that could be like fetal alcohol syndrome or you're a crack baby or, you know, and I'm not saying that that's the only reason why. That's one of a few. You know, you could have been in an accident um, and like myself, I had a stroke. Because of the stroke, I had PTSD. I didn't choose to have a stroke. You know, five-year-olds can have a stroke. A, a one-month-old, a two-day-old can have a stroke. A 78-year-old can have a stroke. I didn't choose uh, to, to go to work one day and have my brain almost kill me. You know, I didn't choose to have PTSD because of my stroke. I didn't choose to end up with a major depressive disorder because of my stroke. None of that was a choice. So if I didn't choose to enter into that situation, I can't just choose to leave it. It's not like a light switch on off. You know, I have made choices to make my life better. Yes. I have made choices to make my life more manageable. Yes. That has included some therapy with some wonderful therapists. One of them, I owe my life to. Definitively, she knows who she is. I owe my life to this woman and, and she is amazing. I have had another therapist that I'm doing and have done counseling with specifically for the PTSD. She's an amazing lady. I, She has given me skills and abilities and tools that I didn't have before. Um, I have seen a, a, a third therapist for a very brief period of time. I have done uh, a three-week intensive mental health uh, day patient program. You know, I have I have a psychiatrist. I have medications. There are many, and I've got my uh, unregistered, uncertified, untrained support animal, Crash the Wonderbird. You know, just him in my life has been amazing. And then I have the woman that I'm indebted to on a level that just can't ever be repaid, my girlfriend. She has been there through the shitty days. She has been there when I've had to go to the hospital because things are going sideways and I needed help. So to say someone, just make a choice, just go get some sunshine, just go drink a glass of water, why don't you just shut your fucking mouth? Because you're over-opinionated, under-educated, you have no fucking clue about what you're talking about. You're a boxer. You're a meat sack that gets hit for a living. That's your job. So why don't you keep your your scope of expertise inside the ring with trying to not be rope-a-doped? Please don't take too many shots to the head because that could have some significant disadvantages in the rest of your world, right? And, and you know what? Next time you think you have an opinion about something you truly don't understand, I'm going to go ask you to like make a cup of coffee, make a cup of tea, Finish that cup of coffee or cup of tea and then go down to your nearest bookstore after you've sort of calmed down from that idea of, you know, spitting some rabid, frothing, just stupid idea in the world. Go down to your nearest bookstore, buy a couple of books on the subject and read them. Because just saying to someone that just has a mental health issue, oh, just smile, just drink, drink a glass of water, just think happy thoughts. It'll just get better, and that's the best way to do it. So, yeah. The rant here hath ended. The children can come back in the room now. I promise, no more bad words. So, 
mental health issues are complex. Mental health issues are messy. Mental health issues are misunderstood. Mental health issues can be misdiagnosed. There's so many things that happen due to mental health issues. Uh, and, and, and it all depends on what disorder, the deficits, dysfunctions you have and how impacting they are. And like just, just talking about your basic mental health issues could be a four hour video in and of itself before we even get into the treatment and diagnosing of said mental health issue. Um, so for those of you in the world that are watching this video, there is nothing wrong with you. This is not just get over it. There is no way to just smile, to just drink a glass of water and just go get some sunshine and your mental health issues will just evaporate. That is uneducated fiction. What you do need to do is surround yourself with people that you trust, people that you can be emotionally and intellectually authentic with, people that you can have an exchange of ideas, uh, an exchange of opinions that is not judgmental. You know, uh, people that aren't going to say things like, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Well, I do. That's the way I feel. So telling me I'm, I'm not entitled to my own emotional agency, well, why not? Like, that's the, that's the way things have made me feel. So I'm trying to tell you how I feel so you better understand how this conversation is going. If someone tells you that they are in crisis, right, you need to take that person, grab them in a firm, all round, bear hug and grasp, and you need to take them to help, drag them to help. Yes, exactly, drag. You know, gently though, with permission, right? Um, put them over your shoulder and take them to help. You know, um, if you can get a medical practitioner that's an actual doctor um, that is actually licensed and, and can benefit the outcome, if they do house calls, do that. Um, it, you know. You can call mental health crisis lines. If you happen to already have a therapist or a social worker or a psychologist, psychiatrist, you can call them. Worst case scenario, things are just going sideways and you can't control it. Go to your home phone. Go to your mobile phone. Pick up that phone, dial 911-999, whatever it is to get you the help you need. And tell the operator dispatcher, I'm having a mental health crisis. I need help you will definitively get the help you need. That is sometimes the most difficult step to do, to make that step of just admitting to the world, my life is a little bit unmanageable and in a way I, I can't deal with and I, I've got to seek some help. Once you've gone and gotten that help, right? Um, that's the first step. That doesn't make you better. That just doesn't make the problems just magically dissipate. That's going to be the start of a journey where you're going to meet a bunch of people that are going to help diagnose you and help create a treatment plan and possibly a safety plan. That may or may not mean you're going to spend four or five days in a hospital, um, possibly against your will, uh, because they might medically keep you in the building because they feel so concerned about your safety. That might mean you go to therapy two days a week for the next six weeks. That might mean you go to see a special therapist. That might mean medication. That might mean so many things. But the most important thing is if you get to a position where you know you're not trusting yourself, where you know you do not feel safe around yourself, please immediately find someone you love and trust. Place them in a firm, all round, bear hug grasp beg, plead, demand that you go get help. Have them take you to the help you need and have them stay with you until you get the help you need. Well, and on that note, if anyone out there is right now in a position where you feel you need help, please do what I've said. I've had to do it myself. It is not an easy thing to do, but it's a great thing to do. And on that note, just be good to each other.